Welcome to Series 19, everyone. We are feeling the con drop something fierce from Gen Con this year. So we apologize to everyone who was looking forward to hearing our lovely voices early this morning. It was a really fantastic convention, but preparing for it, going to it, and coming back from it was quite an experience. And we will get you this episode out as soon as we can. Oh wait, you're listening to it right now. Hopefully we can make up for it with some amazing content this evening or early on a Tuesday, if this is when you're listening to this. We've got Chris Foster on the show with us for this series as we start exploring a few really amazing smaller games that we really enjoy. First up is going to be Love and Justice by amazing friend of the show, Senda Lino. Well, that kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Hmm. I don't have much else to say right now about much of anything. Uh, I'm going to finish actually editing the episode after recording this cold open. That's how far behind I am. But that's okay. We're going to have our Gen Con recap episode for after series 19 so look forward to hearing all about our amazing shenanigans later this month but for now sit back relax and enjoy some character creation cast done quick with chris Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I welcome Chris Foster, host of the Playtest Podcast, for a special series of episodes covering smaller games. Our first game is Love and Justice, a magical girl's hack of lasers and feelings. Yep. Uh, hi, and welcome to Character Creation Cast, Chris. We are really excited you could join us. I'm, uh, I'm, hi, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Once more with feeling. <laughs> hi. <laughs> or as, was it, who was it, Michael, when we did our, um, our Edge of the Empire episodes? This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start by introducing you to our audience, Chris. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what projects you're currently working on? So I, I knew this was coming and, and like this has been the hardest part of preparing for this whole thing is trying to figure out what I'm going to say here because my, my go-to is to make jokes about myself, but I know that if I do so, Amelia, you'll be mad at me, make me mad at me and, yeah, and, I will. and Ryan will compliment me and I can't handle that much support at once <laughs> and no one at home wants to hear me cry. So <laughs> uh, Look, it wouldn't be the first time somebody cried during an episode. So. <laughs> Yes. Last time it was me, but it could be you. <laughs> uh, I guess I could have joined that rank. Uh, so uh, I, here's what I've, I've worked really hard on this. Uh, okay. Here we go. This is what I've come up with. It's a compromise. Hi, my name is Chris. I'm pretty nice. Oh, good so far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, as you said, I, 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 I'm, as you said, I uh, run the playtest podcast where we uh, do one shots at the moment of only my game, there will be other games, uh, mm -hmm. and test it and change it as we go. Uh, I'll have guests like Amelia uh, has been on it uh, for the Change Like episodes where we just talk about game uh, theory, game design, complain about games a lot is what happens. <laughs> and come up with very solid game design theory. <laughs> yes, very. Uh, some of the, uh, just if you want to know more about the, the Santa Jello continuum, Amelia uh coin <laughs> just cut, go listen to her episode uh, it's really good i also uh, other than those i also make games uh you can check check out games i make on playtest.itch.io depending on when this comes out there may be a new game on there called uh Dabini. uh it'll be the first game i actually charge for which is a big step for me because i'm a coward uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh which is going to be interesting because i'm i'm not gonna 
charge a lot for it, but all the money I get for it is going to go back into it for art and layout and stuff. And eventually, I want to release it as a physical game. So nice. If y'all want to support that, go check that out. Yeah, the premise of this game is super awesome, and I really want to play it. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Hopefully. 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 I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. It's actually very uncomfortable. I've had them crossed for a while now. <laughs> oh, Chris, they're going to get stuck like that. It's been very hard fingers. to type. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into our episode. We're going to start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. Uh, we should probably start by talking about what we mean by small games or uh, micro RPGs. Fewer pages, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah. So when we when we originally started talking about this episode, we were like, we're going to do micro games. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to change it and call it smaller games, Ooh. because I think some of these aren't necessarily micro games. Mm -hmm. Once we get into this series, Literally some one are, of them is <laughs> right. I know. So one of them is the other ones are smaller. One um, of them's an actual full game. <laughs> right. But I wanted to talk about it. And I mean, it's not like a five or six hundred page, no. you know, uh, small, smaller. I said smaller. Yeah. When when. You brought this up. You're like, oh, yeah, we'll take suggestions for games. And I suggested some games. And then I realized, like, oh, I'm the worst person to ask about this because I don't like small games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I just don't. I, I have a very specific use for them. And that's to try out people for longer games. <laughs> exactly. Look, these are the audition pieces. Yeah. I think this is your monologue section before <laughs> you get to go and do your actual full literally, audition. The two games that we're going to talk about that I've actually played... I have only, I've literally, that's what I've used them for is vetting new players for a campaign I want to run. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quality use for them. Though. Yeah, I true. like it. True. You know, like getting to know people, jump right in. Mm -hmm. So some of these, this particular one for Love and Justice is three pages. It's mm -hmm. very short. Mm -hmm. There are some that are, when we talk about like micro games, I think of like the 200 word RPGs mm -hmm. or like the one page games that Grant Howitt puts out a lot. Yeah. Um. So these ones I've, like I said, I've called smaller games because they're, they're all less than 100 pages, mm -hmm. let's say. So they're fewer rules, a little bit less to learn. Um, usually they're pretty easy to use for one-shots and mm -hmm. things. They're not necessarily meant for longer campaigns. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what I think of when I think of a smaller game. I, Ryan, I don't know what constitutes a smaller game for you. Yeah, I mean, usually you can run a smaller game in a period of two hours, uh, give or take. Uh, it depends on how long you want to drag it out, but a lot of smaller games, you can do character creation and gameplay within two hours and you're fine. Usually, uh, two hours. That's really short. It is really you can short. do anything in two hours. I know. Right. Uh, <laughs> Does that account for time spent goofing around? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not at that point. Oh, okay. Um, Ryan but, doesn't goof. Well, especially like Love and Justice and <laughs> games that are smaller, like Lasers and Feelings and, and things like that. Uh, they're almost designed to not go over two hours because once you get past that point, mm -hmm. it gets just kind of drawn out. You're rolling the same things over again. There's not too many complex mechanics. Mm -hmm. So Even you could probably push it to three hours and still have fun, but four hours might be stretching it way too much. You can do it and you can still have fun, but the longer you go, the, the, more likely it is it's just going to be kind of repetitive after a while. Ryan, you have so little faith in me. <laughs> I can draw things out for so much time. I mean, that's true. That's true. Yeah, no, I think a lot of these games are meant to be played in that one-shot format, too. Yes. They're not meant to be ongoing, continuous campaigns. A lot of them don't really have rules for, like, leveling up and things like that, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I like the idea of using these as basically icebreakers mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for longer sessions uh, or longer campaigns. I think that's pretty cool. And I think just like introducing people to gaming too, because mm -hmm. when you open a book like, you know, well, even D&D &D or like Edge of the Empire or something like that, oh. it's really easy to get overwhelmed with the amount of info that's mm -hmm. in there. And as experienced gamers, we're pretty good at looking at it and being like, I need this and I need this and I yeah. definitely don't need that. Like, here's what I can throw out. Here's what I can keep. But when you're just coming to gaming, it's really overwhelming to yeah. look at something like that and be like, how much of this do I need to know? Yeah. And I know that that's a thing that a lot of people get stuck on when they first look at RPG books is like, this is so, like, how am I ever going to know this? I mm -hmm. can't read through a 20 page booklet that comes with a board game. Mm -hmm. How am I ever going to know all of this? <laughs> yeah. And so these kinds of games are a really good starting point for 
for people because they don't feel as overwhelming. Yeah. Well, even like veterans, I go to the gaming store and I, I was like, maybe I should pick up Edge of the Empire. I really like this game. I go to the shelves and I see like 30 books for Edge of the Empire, 30 books for Forces and Destiny, 30 books for that other one that I don't remember. And well, they're all the same game. I know they're all the same game, but they're like all these like supplements and everything. I'm like, oh my goodness. I, I don't even know where to, I mean, I know where to start, but like, am I going to miss out if I don't have all these other supplements as well? Yes, you have just, to have them all. I know, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at my shelf and like L5R only came out last year because it wasn't out at last Gen Con. Yeah. So it's only come out in the last year and I have one, two, three, four. Four supplements yeah. for it already. <laughs> so, I have like it's legitimately sixteen Star Wars books for it. Wow. Star Wars. Wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's really easy to like get in deep. Yeah. Um, gotta gotta catch these, them all, man. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Man. Oh man, if they made a supplement book for each Pokemon. Oh okay. no. <laughs> Sorry. Coming back. Um. Yeah. That's the nice thing about smaller games yeah. is that that that's not a problem. Mm hmm. And also, it's they don't e cost you know, them a lot of money. I, right. You know, I, yes, I, 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 don't I have a four hundred dollar book collection like some of us do. I know. Right. No, I went online and and bought the games to record this episode last week, and it was like nineteen dollars or something. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. And uh, this game, uh, Love and Justice, is actually free right now mm -hmm. on, I believe, Drive Through RPG, uh, right. and it is written by a uh, friend of the show, Sended Leno. Uh, who is also one of the hosts on She's a Super Geek and Pandas Talking Games, um, among other things. Very um, famous appearance on Playtest Podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very famous appearance on our show as well. Yeah. Wow. She just famously appears all over the place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It must be very startling when she sees herself in the mirror like, oh, a famous person. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> appeared. Where did I come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a question we all have about ourselves. Where did I come from? Oh, my. <laughs> Okay, back on track. <laughs> what sorts of things do we need to play this game? How do you play Love and Justice slash, I assume, also Lasers and Feelings? <laughs> so the, the the cool thing about this one is, uh, and, and most micro games or smaller games, uh, all you need are D6s for these, which are I, I find helpful, uh, especially with, when you're saying like introducing newer players. Everybody can look at a D6 and be like, oh, that's a dice. I understand this. Mm -hmm. those, those are in Yahtzee. Uh, those are in Monopoly. Yeah, like that, I have those in my game closet. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so a lot of game, a lot of smaller games will just use D sixes because they're easier. You have a lot of them, uh, and this one I think you only need up to three. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, and then like I have, I just have a little post it postcard I'm going to write my character sheet on. So mm -hmm. you need almost nothing for this game. Yeah, pretty much. You just need the rules, three D six, and something to write on. Probably something to write with, too. That's no, true. Just thumb it in there with your thumbnail. Yep. It'll yeah, work. just like, yeah, just <laughs> scratch it into the wall. Deface your desk. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> just your your desk is just covered in character sheets. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's just scratch marks into the walls and the wood oh, God. and the, like. It's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> This is why this is why the satanic panic happened was actually just because people didn't have pens. They're scratching things into the walls. That's what everyone was so scared of. Yeah. <laughs> just get these poor children some pens. We need some pens and notebooks. My gosh. <laughs> need pens, not Jesus. <laughs> so, what do characters do in Love and Justice? Then uh, it seems like uh, I I've played it before at mm -hmm. a catacon last year under uh, Andy Fox. Mm -hmm. Um. And that was a really fun time. You play magical girls. Mm -hmm. You're basically going through an episode of this magical girls television series. That's pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're fighting okay, for both so, love and justice. Uh huh. Uh, so what if, say, you know, by chance, just asking for a friend, yep. uh, you had zero familiar familiarity with the magical girl genre. <laughs> okay. So. A, a lot of magical girl genres lean into a lot of different types of tropes uh, that are like, you're usually teenagers of sorts in school. So it'll revolve around school, uh, schoolyard drama or uh, you know, classroom drama, things like that. Uh, there's a lot of like mundane sections of 
a Magical Girls episode where they're like, hey, there's a new bake shop in town. Let's go check out the bake shop because that sounds really cool. And then surprise, surprise, uh, the owners of the bake shop are actually working for the evil uh, person that you're constantly fighting against and you can never defeat because they are the ultimate evil and very elusive. It's uh, coincidence the genre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's also uh, generally, dep- there's always a pretty uh, strong theme. Like for Sailor Moon, it's planets. Yep. Uh, ca- like Card Captain Secure, their cards. Those are the two magical girl genres I know or, or shows that I know. Mm-hmm. So that's as far as I know. But I, su- I assume all the theming continues throughout all magical mm-hmm. girl. Uh, yeah, I would say almost all of them have a very consistent theme between all of the main characters. Um, I think like Magic Knights Ray Earth, there was uh, there was only a few people on the team, and they were all like, you know, decked out in like magical girl armor yeah. with uh, with magical swords and stuff like that. And it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, that theme is one of the one of the bigger important parts of because it's all about um, what what am I trying to say the like women growing up into adulthood coming of age age, um stories things like that that's that's very prominent in magical girls Mm -hmm. uh anime uh and then a lot of the games that follow that also follow that sort of uh storyline as well especially if you're going to be playing multiple sessions uh of certain games Mm -hmm. i just want to point out that i'm very fascinated by the fact that i'm having the magical girl genre explained to me by two dudes in their 30s (laughs) Um, <laughs> this is just like a weird moment in my life. So I just wanted to pause and recognize what's happening here. <laughs> but cool. Good. I, I don't know. It's not a thing that I ever got into, mm-hmm. but like also my parents were super strict about what I was and was not allowed to watch. And so I, uh, uh I definitely missed it too. Uh, I, I still haven't actually like delved deep into any magical girl stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I knew of Sailor Moon and stuff and was very much like, uh, as a, a young man in the South was very gendered uh, and like, this is this is for girls, which right? is dumb because uh, adult Chris, like uh, everybody who knows me is like, oh, Chris loves friendship magic, which is all magic, uh, all magical girl genre is. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I remember my cousin being super into it and, I, you know, part of it was, I think, growing up, it was like, well, anything that she did was like, must not be appropriate. So like, I don't know. Um, but my sister, my youngest sister now is like super into it. And so my kids have been watching Sailor Moon with her. Nice. Um, yeah, they're watching it sub though. So uh, Eleanor has no clue what's going on because Eleanor can't read very well. Well, you know, <laughs> so, you don't even need to know the dialogue to know what's going on half the time in Sailor Moon. That's, uh, Nate told me one episode was very, very sad. Oh. So oh, that's true. Um, yeah, that's all I know about it, really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about lasers and feelings because this is a hack of lasers and feelings. So I think if we're going to really understand this game, we probably need to talk about what it's based off of. I've also not ever played lasers and feelings. Mm-hmm. I know that it has stats that are lasers, lasers and, and also feelings and laser feelings. Yeah. Laser feelings. Oh, okay. This is new and exciting. Chris, tell me about lasers and feelings. So it's it's very simple. Uh, and, and as we'll see in this one, you have one stat, and it's just a number. Uh, and you roll under that, and it's lasers. I can't remember if it's exact, if it's under is lasers or over. It doesn't matter. You roll under that, it's one of them. Roll over it, it's the other one. So if you're trying to do like action stuff, you need to roll lasers. If you're rolling uh, like social stuff, you got to roll feelings. Um, and so what you pick your number as may- changes that. So if you have a higher number, you're better at one because you can roll under easier. Uh, or if you have a lower number, you can roll over easier. Mm-hmm. And then you have like a job. Lasers and, so uh, uh, lasers and feelings is specifically uh, meant to be like a, a, a goofy Star Trek simulator. Mm-hmm. Um, I say that as if Star Trek isn't already goofy. Uh, <laughs> um you just upset one of our listeners somewhere. It's very serious. No, <laughs> it can be. There's some very good stuff, but but it could be very cute. lasers, so but it could also be very. <laughs> <fierce. Yeah. laughs> True. So so it's like the Orville, basically. I I I assume I've never watched the Orville. That's like Star Trek, only more goofy. Okay. Yes. It's like oh, it's like Galaxy Quest. Oh yeah yeah yeah. That works too. Never seen that one either. Oh my oh, gosh. Should, Galaxy Quest is legitimately. Okay, good. I was not allowed to watch it. What? <laughs> I don't, don't worry about it, Jude and I have had a whole conversation about how I need to watch it. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Uh, I've already been told. So, <laughs> um, the, the, the important thing to know about Lasers and Feelings is uh, it's zero prep game. 
the uh, you, your characters only have like a job and a thing they're good at, and then their number, and that's it. Uh, and then the GM has a literal list of six like different sections that you can roll a d6 on to randomly generate whatever the problem is, the, like the procedurally generated uh, episodic episode you're mm-hmm. in. Uh, and that's it. You just play from there and see how weird you can get it. Yeah. It, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Just stick to the tropes and, and you're fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember if Lasers and Feelings has like a because uh, I know Love and Justice has a list of tropes and some guides there. But I don't remember if, if uh, Lasers and Feelings will tell you like the different things you should try to uh, come back to. Mm-hmm. But it's basic sci-fi nonsense. Right. And there are lots and lots of different hacks of Lasers and Feelings. Yes. Um, Love and Justice being one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what makes Love and Justice then different than Lasers and Feelings? Well, obviously there is love and justice. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so not lasers. And no lasers or feelings, yeah. or are there sometimes feelings, just not statistics? Only one though, just love. Just love. <laughs> love is the only feel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Otherwise you're not allowed to have lasers or feelings. Yeah. That's, they're just, oh. just barred. Okay, yeah. I don't really want to like so what if I used lasers to get justice? Yeah, you do well, roll justice then. Yeah. With lasers. You get this. With lasers. Okay, yeah. justice with lasers. Yep. <laughs> it's laser justice. Laser and justice. love feelings. Love feelings, yep. Yeah, you pr- you picked it up pretty much already, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the actual difference between any of these hacks, uh, it's, so th- it's always like one side is action and one side is social. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all it is. The, the names are just like flavor. Uh, the, the changes between uh, love and justice and lasers and feelings come in the things you can pick from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the like the randomly generated thing uh, uh, episode basically. Yeah. Uh, so, so those are the things they have to you have to actually change and plug to hack it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's what they've done here. Uh, I, th- I don't because th- I think in in uh, Love and Justice there is still just uh, a thing you're good at uh, and uh, your role. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, let's see. Yeah, your character type. Your role and your power, I guess. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Oh, and you get a drawback in this one. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if this is in Lasers and Feelings, but also when you roll equal to your number, Mm -hmm. it gives you some sort of magical insight. Yeah. In in Lasers and Feelings, it's literally called You Have Laser Feelings. (laughs) (laughs) So you get to ask a question and then try again. Yeah. So uh, there's some really interesting uh, genre appropriate feeling or uh, questions there that uh, that help you uh, move the story along, which is really cool. That's pretty much it. It's it's magical girls, lasers and feelings. Mm-hmm. All right. Any other like terms or concepts that we need to know? We've already explained the magical girl genre. So I'm feeling a lot better about that now. Mm-hmm. We've definitely um, gone over that that love and justice are not lasers and feelings. Right. We've yeah. I mean, that. I feel like we've cleared everything up and we're ready to jump into it. I think so too. Hey, let's uh, let's make some people. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to say it now because like half of our guests say it. <laughs> like, and I always want to like take that little sound bite and use that, but then we don't. I know. Um, okay, so this one's broken down into pretty easy steps for us. Um, I think it looks like character creation is one of the three pages. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just start up at the top yeah, let's do and it. create our, create our group. Yeah, right. so we get to choose a theme for the group, uh, and it can be any theme. But they've got some good suggestions here. There's planet, space, flower, color, jewel, sweet, and kawaii. Kawaii, <laughs> which is. <laughs> I, which yeah. is what I assu- why I assumed you left. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, someone explain to me exactly what that is. So I'll that's that's uh, in Japan, kawaii means cute, effectively. Okay. Um, and it's it's like those. Uh, there's a, there's like a specific art style that they sometimes use for that, where it's like. You know, yeah. Sometimes I'm familiar with like the aesthetic, but I was like, I don't really know. Like, I never bothered to like look up what it means. Yeah. You know? So. It'd be kind of like what, like a Hello Kitty sort of mm-hmm. team or something like that. All right, um, Chris, you're our guest. So do you have any thoughts on what Ooh, what power. we should do? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't give me power. I'll <laughs> I'll go mad. Uh, and Let's. That, that's why socialism. you're here. Um. So, do y'all do we want to go with a theme from the list to make it easy on ourselves, or do we do kind of something new? I think we can come up with something new. We could. Uh, just just to 
No, that's dumb. I don't like that one. No, uh, do it. Say it. Say it. Uh, I was just going to say, <laughs> like, what if, what if our uh, Magical Girl show was sponsored by um, brands? Oh, no. I was going to say breakfast cereals. Breakfast cereals? <laughs> oh, yeah. That too. Let's see breakfast cereals. Oh, my God. So <laughs> okay. our group theme is breakfast cereals. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think please don't I sue just us. Wanna, I just want to say, let's just name it cereals because I'm an adult and I'll eat cereal whenever I want. Oh, uh, it does touche. not have to be breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, every meal is breakfast, right? Yeah, you're just breaking it. It's just shorter and shorter fast. Sh- exactly. See, I, I think that, like, I'm one of those people that thinks any food is a breakfast food if you eat it in the morning. Yeah. So I think that it also works the other way. That, yep, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. So <laughs> a theme is breakfast cereals. Okay, so our theme is, is it breakfast cereals, or is it breakfast, or is it cereal, or... Traditional breakfast cereals? Yeah. Okay, so now we have to name our group. Um, Ooh. Uh, okay, so it so suggests... They have, they, they, they have a thing of taking your theme name and, and adding, a, like, scouts, rangers, friends, girls, dancers, blossoms, candles, or choose your own at the end. But, so... I don't know if I'm not like cereal ranger. Well, I was cereal thinking rangers. about cereal I mean, squad. Cereal scouts. I was thinking cereal, cereal squad. Yeah, I get alliteration. Cereal squad. Ooh. Cereal squad. Yeah. And you could do hashtag squad goals. We could, we could do squad <laughs> goals and squad walk and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cereal squad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God. Heck yeah. I'm trying to like rack my brain for what kind of cereal I want to base my scout on because I have very bad taste in in cereal. <laughs> well, then obviously you pick one of those cereals, like, and somebody's got to be like the honey bunches of oats of the group. That's me. Oh, I'm, oh my god, my, my favorite cereal is Raisin Bran. <laughs> <laughs> it has been since I was the smallest of childrens. Look, sometimes it's good though. Raisin Bran is really good. good. I like How it. dare you? <laughs> Welcome to Character Cereal Cast. So now we we have to name our group Power. Um, I guess like we won't all have like oats or bran, so I don't know how to an oat catastrophe. Ooh, um, can, we, can, we, can it be like part of a balanced breakfast? Balanced breakfast burst. Uh, balanced breakfast blast. Yeah, balanced breakfast <laughs> yes. blast. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, I love this so much. There's always like a little asterisk that says part of at when we say it. Right. <laughs> yep. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> I love how our our magical girls anime is completely selling out to uh, capitalism. Oh, immediately, which is like totally on brand for all of us. Yeah, <laughs> all, all three of us, ca- us staunch capitalists in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Oh my god. Okay. Ooh, now we get to create our characters. Yeah. Now we're gonna actually make us. All One right. of us has to be the leader. And I refuse. And as guests, you have to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never led anything in my life. I won't start now. I mean, that's fair. I say as the person who GMs every game I'm in. Yeah. Well, I mean... So if you're the leader, you don't get to pick one from that list, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're not... Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, pretty you're much. You're just the leader. Yeah, that's pretty much how that works, I believe. Okay. But you can well, also... I mean, I know what I'm about, so I'll be the leader. Oh, okay. That works. Unless you want to be Ryan. No, that's fine. You can be the leader. That's okay. Okay. I like to be in charge. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Let's see. So the last time I played this, I played as the genius. Mm-hmm. So I am not going to play the genius this time. I'm not even going to play anything this time because we don't play these. Um, but I'm not going to pick the genius this time. Hmm. Oh, my God. I'm, try- I'm trying to figure out what breakfast cereals go with which ones yeah. here. And picking based off of that. Uh, mm. I'm going to make it a little easier for you. Hold on a second. Okay. And very uncharacteristically, not wait till the end to pick mine. Uh, let's see here. No. Oh, God. Why is this in the wrong order? No. I need to know. Uh, oh, internet, please. I don't need this right now. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with the famous one. Oh, nice. Uh Hmm. So, so now you know there are two of them. You're not going to pick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, right? Um, okay, so it's the top two that I won't pick. Um, gosh. Yeah, I... Hmm. Okay. I think I will go with... I don't know why I'm like so serious about picking this one. Because uh, <laughs> this genre is this very important for to an you. Entire four it hours. is true. It, it's very important to me. Oh, my gosh. Um... By the way, when y'all are talking about that, I've definitely ran lazy feelings for four hours. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> oh, 
I, I mean, said, like, don't underestimate my like ability said, to drag things out. Yeah. I mean, if you have a lot of good role playing and not a lot of rolling, then you can definitely uh, stretch it out for as long as you can. Yeah. Uh, but if you're heavy on rolling, uh, that's going to get boring after a while. Maybe. I mean, who am I to judge? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> you can you can do what you want. Have a six-hour lasers and feelings. I don't care. Oh, no, I, I refuse. Well, at this <laughs> rate, Ryan, how long it's taking you to think, it's going to take six hours. <laughs> That's true. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take, uh... Why don't you just roll? <gasps> how many? One, two, One, three, three, four, four five, five, six. six. Oh, perfect. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is why you're the leader. <laughs> one, the spiritual one. I'll take that. Okay. Awesome. What a se- spiritual cereal is. <laughs> Uh, boo berries. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's so good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that's amazing. What is Ofuda? Right. The one who uses no Ofuda, idea. or is a shrine maiden, or both? Okay. So now we have our character types. Um, next is choosing your number from two to five. The high number means you're better at love. A low number means you're better at justice. Uh, you can't pick one or six because you have to be able to roll under them. Yeah. Or over them. Uh, Ooh. I'm going to choose four. Mm-hmm. Mostly love, but a little bit of justice. <laughs> what are you thinking, Amelia? I'm going to go with three. Ooh. Three. Okay. Well, then I'm going to be the weird one here. Let's see. Uh, I, so I'm the I'm the famous one. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go like. Make this really fun and go with five. Yes. Uh, a number is five. Uh, I, I'm i very personable, but don't ask me to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, step three, pick a drawback. Every magical girl has a trait that complicates things. Select one from the following. So it's uh, crybaby, airhead, love struck, antisocial, not actually human, torn <laughs> loyalties, dark past, stubborn, or clumsy. That's awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm the spiritual one. Okay. I think I'm going to go, uh, if y'all don't mind, uh, I'm going to steal Amelia's here <gasps> and go with torn loyalties. I am I am torn between being loyal to the group and being loyal to my publicist. Oh. Ooh. I thought you were going to take Dark Past. Uh, I think I might take that. <laughs> ooh. Well, if you're going to take Dark Past, I'm going to take Not Actually Human. Ooh. <laughs> Jeez. Because you're a ghost, because you're Boo Bear. Exactly. <laughs> wow. So you got some haunted breakfast cereal. All right. That's amazing. So, Dark Past, that could be uh, Count Chocula. <laughs> <laughs> are we it's all of Krispies the. that used to be Cocoa Krispies. Yeah, are we all the, uh, the monster brain? <laughs> uh, I, I'm specifically not, because I have a thing. I'm going. Okay. 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 <laughs> I can't wait. All right. All right. Um,. Name your power, step four. Uh, you have a magical transformation device that allows you to thematically transform and access your magical girl powers. Choose what that object is, as well as the theme of the power it gives you from the following list. Um, I like that heal- that sugar is a choice. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, that healing slash positive energy is a choice. Um, both of those are very good breakfasty themes. Uh-huh. Um, what, do, what do our devices want to be? I'm thinking spoons. Like oh, fancy spoons. Yes. Yeah. Or or yeah. I like spoons. Spoons are very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of having like a wand or something, we all just have like a big spoon. A giant spoon. Yeah. Yes. It's like all uh, all bedazzled and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like so colors. so mine has little like um uh the, it's not actually shaped like it, but it's got the pattern of like one of those little honey spoon, the little honey. Yeah, the honey comb. Dip, yeah. Nice. Not the, not the comb, but the thing. No, like the comb, but yeah. like the, uh, yeah, the little honey the thingy. wand the, thing. The, the honey <laughs> what is it? You, I know. What is it called? Oh, I, I got one that. of those recently. Um, oh, I don't know uh, what it's called, though. A honey whapper. Honey whapper? <laughs> it looks like a mace. Is that like a whippersnapper? <laughs> honey whapper. Uh, <laughs> People ask, what is the wooden thing used for honey? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A honey dipper. Honey dipper. Honey dipper. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I was close. But I do want you to know that it comes up if you Google honey wand. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a honey dipper. Honey dipper. That's amazing. So, yours is a honey dipper? 
Uh, it's it, it's got the pattern of a honey dipper on it. It's gotcha. still uh, just a spoon that you could use for cereal if okay. you were large. If you're a large person, okay. <laughs> you got a very large mouth. Got to have a big mouth. Oh yeah, um, no, and we're anime, so we have a very small mouth. So it doesn't oh work. right, <laughs> it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, mine is a spoon. I don't know what kind of cereal I'm going to be though, so I don't know what kind of what my spoon's going to look like. We can decide that when once you figure that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess it would help you figure out what power you have too, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you're the leader. Mm-hmm. What was your drawback? A dark past? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I gotta be like some kind of chocolate cereal, right? Yeah. Your your spoon could just have like holes in it, which is very sad because it doesn't hold milk. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it's one of those spoons that you use for like stirring your hot chocolate that has like chocolate on it already. Oh, I found a, I found a site uh, for science of people that has an article about what different breakfast cereals say about you oh there's got to be a buzzfeed quiz for this right oh, probably i'm sure i'm sure there probably <laughs> the buzzfeed, is. The buzzfeed quiz for everything i mean there's cocoa puffs so no i'm not i'm gonna stop burying the lead now since we're actually talking about it i am the number one most popular cereal brand in the world cheerios yeah yes. <laughs> not oh, honey nut a- cheerios oh just regular cheerios. cheerios just regular cheerios oh man Which cereal are you it's time to get serious about cereal. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Pick a bear. Hmm. I'm really sorry about this, but Mary's banging on the side of the house. So I'm gonna have to go make her stop. Oh, <laughs> what? I'm doing do this Buzzfeed quiz. All right. This will be uh, this will be trimmed a little bit because we gotta figure. Ooh, I could go with Lucky Charms. That's spiritual. Ooh, yeah, that is really good. What's like a dark evil cereal? I'm just like, what is the most evil? Cereal? <laughs> I did a search for spiritual cereals. What about grape nuts? That seems pretty evil. Like, who would want to eat that? I don't know. See, but when you Google most evil cereal, it's like, do you mean most evil cereal killers? And you're like, <laughs> no, I meant like cereal like breakfast cereal. Uh-huh. So, um, Kashi Goline on this article states, if this is your favorite cereal, you are a liar. Or it's been so long since you've had real cereal that you have forgotten what it's supposed to taste like. What is a cereal? Kashi Goline. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like like an all natural like like nuts and and mm-hmm. other things, and it's it's not really I don't know. It's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. It's trail mix with milk in it. <laughs> yeah. No, because trail mix is good. Yeah, but I wouldn't put milk in it. <laughs> all right. So for my uh, for my cereal, I'm going with Lucky Charms. Awesome. Uh, because that's uh, that's very spiritual based, and I'm gonna say my my wand has like the different charms, like along yeah, the, the, the length of the spoon. Um, oh, this says if you like Cheerios, you're a perfectionist. You've convinced yourself that you like Cheerios, even if they taste like cardboard. <laughs> so you have a problem with self deception. <laughs> and to the cereal companies listening to this, we love all your cereals. Uh, I love one of you. Oh, no, I do love all the cereals, actually. <laughs> I'm being honest. Grape nuts. Who are you? Really? Who likes grape nuts? <laughs> oh, you're on the same article. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hilarious. What's Raisin Bran? Um, does it have Raisin Bran? It's, it's got to have Raisin Bran. It does Rude. Raisin Bran. You're my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not too far off. <laughs> uh, uh. Oatmeal. You're so clever. Not. This answer doesn't count. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a hot cereal. Oh, so wait, we're supposed to be... Okay. Oh, now I'm going to figure out a Cheerio-based power. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you do. Um, well, Cheerios, they're O's. Yeah. Uh, life-saving. Because uh, if you if you swallow them whole, they've got a little hole in them, so you can still breathe. Tell you what, though. You know what Cheerios are, are good for? Cheerios promote heart health. Ooh. You know what is associated with hearts? Mm-hmm. Love. Uh, air. Right. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, love. Love. <laughs> <laughs> I have blood powers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, this, this magical girl team just went super dark. Uh, Cocoa Puffs, you're deprived. Perhaps you grew up in a rural swamp infested parcel in the middle of nowhere and had no friends because no one ever told you that you can't have chocolate for breakfast unless it's your birthday. And even then, heaven forbid you eat Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> this, is a, this is a very uh, scientific and extremely professional article that we are reading uh, with examples such as that. 
Special K, you're on a diet. <laughs> and you're going to hate and you're going to hate it when I tell you that special K is still carbs and does not count as healthy. Mm-hmm. It's just... Like you could do that with any cereal, literally. Like I'm going to have a bowl of cereal for breakfast and a bowl of cereal for lunch and a sensible dinner. You're going to lose weight cuz y- you're eating like 200 calories for two meals in one day. Oh. Hey, Ryan, you've never seen my cereal bowl. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like what kind of cereal are you eating? Are you eating the suggested one half cup or something stupid like that? Okay, okay. I I usually go with two servings because I've measured it. I just I just fill I the just bowl dump up. that stuff <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? If I'm if I finish it and I'm feeling really bad about myself, I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, especially if you don't drink the milk first. Oh, I'm going to drink the milk. <laughs> oh, so you double the milk, too? No, I don't. Oh, okay. oh, I don't actually put very much milk in mine at all. Oh. See, I'm I'm a fan of uh, the milk afterwards with all of the added, quote-unquote, nutrients. Boop. Okay, I still haven't picked my cereal. You guys, this is so hard. <laughs> You're the leader. Oh. You have a dark you know, path. I feel uh, there's like I need to co- be like Wheaties, right? Cocoa Pebbles. We- uh, oh, Wheaties are good Wheaties? because of like the sports tie-in. Yeah, Wheaties. That's a good, like... Good money there, too. Yeah, so maybe I should adjust my stat to be like a two, so that it's all physical. Let's get some. Uh, let's get some fighty, uh, some Wheaties money into this uh, anime. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust my stat so it's a two, um, and then I have to name my power. I mean, it's gonna be like healing and positive energy, right? Mm. I'm gonna um, say my power is uh, luck based. Luck based powers. Give people bad luck and give people good luck. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm. I just can can control swarms of bees. Oh yeah! Nice. Have bee based powers? <laughs> yes. Wow. You, as long as you can control them. And they love well, bees. But that, you can summon bees, but you can't control them. That, that's called a callback, people, to our fans <laughs> out there. Her, yeah, <laughs> tell our fans who listened past series. I don't know, was that seven or eight or that, yeah, whatever that was. Oh yeah. Oh my god. You can summon bees, but you can't control them. <laughs> this is the worst superpower in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we all have our powers. Um, do we have to give a name to our power, too? Uh, no. You just have to. Well, we, we've just named it. So yours is luck powers, mine's okay. bee powers. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So the next one is name your character, pick from this list, or use something thematic you make up. So. It's got to end with squad, does it? Because we're zero squad. So I'd be like the I'd be like the Cheerio squaddy. What's the squad member? Squad oh, mate. That's a good question. Oh yeah. What do you call a person on a squad? So so our names would probably start with that, right? So like no, because like think about it, like it's the Sailor Scouts, and then their names are Sailor something. Yeah, they're Sailor Moon, Sailor blah blah blah. Right. So. Be... So would would our names start with cereal then? It would be squad actually. <laughs> squad. I mean, if we're Serial Squad, so then it would be, like, Serial something. Serial Lucky Terms? That seems... Serial Luck. Serial Luck. No. Yeah, that seems Hmm. weird. Hmm. Uh, We didn't think this through. No, we didn't think this through. (laughs) Oh, no. What is a squad Uh, member called? I I, I, I guess squad member. We don't have to do... We don't have to go with that. We could just be named, like, Hey, Cheerio, go do this. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Lucky. I don't want to be Weedy. (laughs) Hey, Weedy. (laughs) <laughs> hey, Weedy. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, no, that's what it has to be, though. It has to be yeah. Lucky Weedy. And Cheerio. And Honey. honey. No, but you're oh, not. Oh, God. You're, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that you wanted to just be regular Cheerios, no, but that's not work honey, for not my Lucky now? Weedy and Honey. No, you are yeah. Cheerios, but, like, after this, the series started... The the powers that be were like we need to push Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, we need to push not, Honey Nut. <laughs> so you, your name is now right, Honey. And, like if your powers are all B based, you need to be Honey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I <laughs> I am Honey. Oh my God! I'm Lucky. And I'm Weedy. <laughs> uh, so uh, guys, okay, we can't do this because it's a family friendly podcast. But I really just want to be the breakfast business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> the name like Honey and Weedy. Okay. That's you know that's that's what it was just like in our in our 
test pilot. Yep. Uh, they were like, creation. you need to change Africa. this to the serial squad. We need it more kid friendly. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 that is the like fan made web comic. Mm-hmm. Yes. The- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where it's all the same characters, the same art style, but they're real mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is our this is our tag on AO3. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now that we all yeah. have uh, our character names, now we need an everyday normal name for all of our characters. Uh mm-hmm. And they have a a pretty decent list here, but they say you can pick your own as well. Mm-hmm. So when you use this name, no one normal recognize you recognizes you as a magical girl. So there's that like plot blindness for all the other characters. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Because names are totally how people recognize you. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Hmm. So I feel like since this is a, a serial commercial, basically, it's got they've got to be like uh oh the mascots. Oh, are you? Uh, what's what's the name of? Oh yeah, what's that's a good idea. Well, the Wheaties doesn't have a mascot. The Wheaties has a bunch of different sports stars. <laughs> no, so yeah. you got to be you named be like after Serena. Like yeah, what's like the the like uh, gymnast or something or another? Uh... Well, I think that it's just gonna we're just gonna go. This is gonna be a very dated recording now, but I'm just gonna pick Megan after Megan Rapinoe. Oh yeah, there you <laughs> yes. go. Yes, perfect. Nice. Because uh, even if she's not on a box of Wheaties right now, she needs to be. Yeah. Oh. She and, probably only eats cooler cereal. And what if she voices in the dubbed version? Oh, yeah. That would That'd be, be amazing. Call us, Megan. <laughs> yes, Megan, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. So what's the Lucky Charms uh, leprechaun called? I think he's lucky called Lucky. Leprechaun, I think he? it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably right. No, you need a Lucy. good Irish. You need a good Irish name. Oh, then. Uh, Siobhan or um, yeah, Cersei. Cersei. No, uh, Sersha. I can't remember. Sersha. Sersha. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so the the mascot for Cheerios is named Busby. Uh, so I think her name is just Busby, but spelled differently. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but B E E. That's hilarious. Uh, right? Is that how it's spelled on there? Yeah, it's B E on there. So I think in this one, it's just uh, it's just B U Z I. No, B I. All right. Busby. Awesome. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna go with uh, traditional Irish girls' names. Uh, Alana, that works. Right in the first row of names. Yeah, I mean, I do think Lucy is good too because it's kind of like Lucky. <gasps> uh, yeah, okay, yes, I'm gonna go with that then. Oh, I see how it is when I say it. It's whatever. I didn't hear it. That's why I said I do think it's good. When your co-host says it, you're like, oh, it's good. I'm sorry. My brain was uh, not... It's fine. No, I don't like you either. I apologize. <laughs> Chris, I love you. Why? <laughs> but now you're evil, Ryan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My heart. How the tables have turned. <laughs> I'll, inform, uh, I'll, I'll inform nice Ryan that he is nice Ryan. Hello. Now. Oh, I he's going to be so upset. He is. This is a bad day for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing that could have happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> the tables have turned. Okay, well, uh, that's everything. We yeah. made characters. We made we did. The, the serial squad. <laughs> that's amazing. We did, did we want to? Uh, did we want to run through what adventure we would go through? So y'all have a section for that, right? Yeah. Like we do have our fan fiction tra- section, so I think we can do that. Oh when we go through yeah, there let's do that. Good. That sounds awesome. We got to create some backgrounds for them, though, right? Do we? Is that? That thing. It's the next the part is playing the game. Yeah, the next part is playing <laughs> the game. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, and then there's rules for running the game, and um, and a final showdown group power. Uh, so, which is definitely just a really like you know when kids just grab a bunch of cereals, pour them all into one bowl. That's that's what I. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I heard we were pouring a bunch of cereals together. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's our, our superpower. At, like, blast at the end is just all the cereals in one bowl. And throw. See, you say that like that's a thing that kids do, but in my house, that was like my mom being like, we need to clean out all these boxes of cereal, <laughs> and then you just like dump them together. So that was like kind of like a sad thing of Aww. like, oh, there's not very much left. So now you have to eat the leftover junk cereal. Well, you know, it all combines and creates a, a unique flavor. But is yeah. it good, Ryan? Is it? Good? It really depends on the cereals that you have available to you. I okay. I have definitely noticed some other peer, some cereals pair better with other cereals, uh, based on like flavor content. 
of the cereal. Well, I think when we get to our how would this group do question, we can talk about whether our cereals pair well together. Uh, I'm going to first of all say probably not. No. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's fair. Uh-huh. That's fair. Lucky Charms uh, going with Wheaties. I see. I think the Wheaties and the Cheerios go fine together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a good combo. I'm the weird one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Marshmallows. All uh, over. Honestly, if we pick out all the marshmallows, then it's fine. That's true. So That's you're conditionally bad. invited to the party, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, cool. So we made characters. Did it. We did it. And so now we're going to jump right into our D20 for your thoughts segment, yeah. which normally we wouldn't do until its own episode. We're, but... we're smushing this all together. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, everything's different. <laughs> I show I'm up and stressed. everything gets ruined. <laughs> uh-huh. Chris, you ruined it. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am the agent of chaos. <laughs> How could you, Chris? How could you? You're never being invited back except for the next two episodes that we have to record with you after this. <laughs> okay. You can't be rid of me that easily. I know. I keep trying, and yet. <laughs> I've been on your show several times. Now you're on my show. I don't know. I'm very confused. You're doing you're very bad at getting rid of me. <laughs> I am. I am. I've played like more games with you than I've played with like anybody else in the last year. <laughs> Oh, now I've now I've got to keep that going. That's <laughs> Wait, now, uh, so I know that there's like a a like appearances quota to get a shirt. Uh, uh yes, six. And, and I know I'm like wait, I'm never gonna catch up in that one. But I just I, like after this, I'm gonna springboard past a lot of people in number of characters I've made. That's so true. I know That's that true. doesn't count, but it's bragging rights on my end at least. That's very true. <laughs> Perfect. That is That's true. true. All right, are we ready to jump into our discussion segment? Yeah. D20 for your thoughts. All right, so in this segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how this system feels compared to others. Chris, we're going to start with our age-old question that everyone answers on every RPG podcast. Uh, how did you get into role-playing games? I didn't. <laughs> no, you still hate them. I still don't play how them. How is he here? Why did we ask you? I don't you? even know why. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> I don't. Somebody sent me an email and said to show up. I was a weirdo as a child. Everybody knows that. A lot of other people were. It's fine. Um, st- still kind of. It's whether weirdo. you'll grow out of it as an adult I, or not that really matters. Some, and most of us didn't. Nope. Someday I'll grow out of being a weirdo. Yes, someday. Never. When I'm never an adult. Uh, um, I, I I didn't have friends my age. I had friends my parents' age, and they all played old D and D games and invited me to one of them. Uh, and I didn't know. Uh, that they were bad at role playing for ten years, and that's how I got into role playing. <laughs> that's really cool, though. Uh, it was I played a lot of like uh, first and second edition D anD D, and this was after third edition was out, oh, so no. there's no reason to be playing first and second edition. <laughs> I just had old friends. <laughs> uh, it, it 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 was a lot of fun. Eventually, uh, uh, I went to uh, uh, the Amelia Zone and played a bunch of D twenty modern, and also didn't know that sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough just, lesson to find out. Yeah, I've just been slowly, like, accidentally finding slightly marginally better games. <laughs> it's a long process. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you can only step up like one increment at a time. Yeah, though, yeah. Because so. uh, after that, it was like third edition or second edition L five R, which is oh, not a good gosh. game. <laughs> <laughs> Even I haven't played that one. <laughs> Even that's too bad for me. Uh, there's this, a game called Anima, which is a D100 system. That's not a, it's a good world, bad system. Uh, eventually I got the FFG Star Wars and then I'm like, oh wait, games can be good? What the heck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything I knew is a lie. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. I've just, I've got a pretty standard, uh, uh, hero's journey into role-playing games of just like suffering and then happiness and then more suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's good. Um, can you tell us then about your personal process for picking and creating a character in any role playing system? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that, you know, that guy, I'm that guy, the one who's like, I'll wait till everybody else is finished <laughs> and then fill in the part. So I end up playing a lot of healers, <laughs> uh, which I did dislike for a while, but now that's kind of, I'm into it. I'm fine with it. I've been Stockholmed into liking playing healers. <laughs> <laughs> I play a lot of support things. I do like um when I'm not doing that, uh I also just don't play as much as I GM generally. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of my like when I'm making characters, it's what would be interesting for the players to interact with right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
But I do Which like sounds to- like it fits with your picking last style anyway of like, what does everybody <laughs> else work well with? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do have, just have a theme. Um, I like to, I, I generally, unless I've played a game a lot, I don't think about the mechanics of a character before I start making them. Uh, at, at some point, I'll have a level of system mastery with a game where it just happens in my brain automatically. And I'll be like, oh, that would be a cool like build. Let's make a character for that. But mm-hmm. that's generally not how it works. Uh, mm-hmm. Generally, I'm like, uh, I'll read the flavor text if there's classes for them. Like, oh, this one's interesting. Or I'll try to do something uh, different uh, than I than I have before. Like, especially if if a if a system has a an archetype that doesn't show up in other games, uh, I'll go for that mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, this is my one chance to experience this one. Um, also, real talk: if someone says, "Oh, don't pick this one; it's the bad one." Oh, I'm buddy. gonna pick that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got bad news for you. You activated my trap card. <laughs> that's a fun one to play. What do you mean? Yeah. Don't well, play that. Right. Like, there's always something fun about, like, no, but I can make it good. Trust me. Just like, or just being like, yeah, but I want the bad thing. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I, sometimes I just, I'm like, I, yeah, but I want to do the bad one because yeah. that's fun. Sometimes you just want to be bad. Yeah. Well, I always, but. <laughs> <laughs> But not uh, that kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, um, I generally like try to think of... Uh, I also generally go at, uh, find a personality before I find like what they do in life. Like I, I, uh, I try to play... I, I can't use... A, a, I'll try... Sometimes I'll break out of my comfort zone and be like, this session, this game, I'm playing a butthole. <laughs> 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 uh, and I'll try that. Uh, or like, I, I, if, if there's any trope that I actually fall into a lot, it's the best friend, like the buddy, the sidekick, uh, the supporting character. I really like to play characters who are, uh, subordinates or, um, like, I guess sidekick is the other word to, an, to another player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also like to like, uh, esp- I'm really glad that games are just making, making you make connections to other players as a part of the character creation yeah. now, because that's always been my jam. It's like, I don't want to meet you in a tavern. Let's be brothers or you, mm-hmm. I could be your dad. <laughs> yeah. I've talked about that a lot. And I've said like, I don't know if it's my experience as a woman or not, but like I am not headed off somewhere with some rando with a sword that I met right. in a tavern. That's like me. that is like, I'm just asking to get murdered. I'm not doing that. <laughs> this, I mean, Obviously, I don't have that risk. Well, oh, I do. Everybody <laughs> could get murdered, but it's not quite. Everybody it. could get stabbed by a sword at any time, Chris. Uh, Take it but seriously. Like, this people, has been a PSA. people I know will be like, "Hey, do you want to go to this thing with us?" And I'll be like, "Yeah." And they'll be like, "There's this one person you don't know." I'm like, "Never mind." No, <laughs> right? I don't, I don't want to meet new people. Oh, that's terrifying. What if they're What if they're mean or this annoying? is not a horror game? Do not make me socialize. <laughs> That's what Dread is now, is you just have to, like, go in an elevator. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to run a game of Dread where the whole premise is you are stuck in an elevator with strangers. That's oh, it. No. That's the horror. <laughs> I, I, my heart rate just went up right now just thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my process. I don't even actually know if I answered that question. <laughs> no, you, you most definitely did. I, I, I really like that answer, actually. <laughs> We've talked about the fact that you don't really play a lot of or even make a lot of like rules light games that you like the more crunchy more sand related systems uh, uh, potato uh, chips we potato chips <laughs> oh call back to an episode these people probably didn't listen to it's fine. um their fault <laughs> that's right that's on them what do you think are the big differences in character creation in a game like this versus something of, of a more like traditional system whether it is potato chip crunchy or <laughs> jello squishy <laughs> Uh, I, the thing is, I don't think I don't even think these games go all the way into like Jello territory because you do have a character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the big difference with small games are is how fast you access it. Yeah, uh, like you just have we we made lots of jokes, so it it took us longer than it could have if if we weren't being silly. But uh, character creation in smaller games is usually like you don't have like if I'm gonna run a game with a crunchy system, the first session is entirely building character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in smaller games, it's the first 20 to 30 minutes, yeah. uh, which kind of has like a trade off of, yeah, you get a character faster and you kind of understand what's important in the game. But also, they're all a little samey, right? Like mm-hmm. the, the only actual difference in mechanically with how we're interacting with the game is, are you trying like, where's our number at? Mm-hmm. Really? And then like where we're going to get those extra little d- bonus dice. 
effectively. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, a- so there's in this one, there's only one numeric stat, yeah, right. right, and we just picked it. So there was there are no derived stats. There's no like I'm picking this skill which gives me these points, mm-hmm. and then this ability which gives me these points. So like the the mechanics of it are much much more simplified. Mm-hmm. Um, we still have like fairly flavorful characters, yes. although I don't know that we went as From, like in because depth. Of cereal. <laughs> because cereal, right? Cereal. Uh, yes, we know what our flavors are. <laughs> um. I'm sorry, I just saw Amelia's soul leave her body. <laughs> oh God, I hate puns so much. Um, uh. But we've, you know, so like we've kind of made these people and we've picked things that are important to them like fairly quickly but i don't know how deep we went into any of that whereas i think like with a more quote-unquote traditional game you come out with something a little bit more hefty i guess mm-hmm. i would say mm-hmm. something like it's 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 like more uh concrete more solid yeah firm mm-hmm. ideas of what you have yeah th- this yeah. really speaks to the play to find out um mm-hmm. not only about the story but about your character Right. Uh, where you're going to be filling in gaps of what your character's like as you're playing the game because the character creation gives you just that very basic baseline so you can actually jump into the game faster. Yeah. It's fun. Yep, it is. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, so how does the process in this game streamline gameplay? I mean, you just you just get to it. Yeah. Like, even because because you only have one stat, you only got one thing to remember. Like, you don't have to explain the rules beyond that to players. You mm-hmm. just start rolling dice. You start playing in character, and it even gives you the adventure hook for the the end of it. Mm-hmm. Like, it even and and this one specifically even tells you how to end the game. Yeah, when you're ready to end the game, use your big attack. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so this is nothing but a streamlined game, mm-hmm. and yeah. and it's uh this one specifically uh it's very uh either monster of the week e where you're mm-hmm. going against like a main villain at the end of the episode, and then you take them out. Um, or you're going against like the, the big, big bad, if you want to do like a season finale sort of deal. Um, Mm -hmm. and then you're, you're taking them out. So all, all the games are going to play relatively the same, you know, in big chunks of the plot, Mm -hmm. but it's those minor details that you can switch around. Like if we created different characters with a different theme, that game's going to play totally differently, but, uh, you know, still follow the same sort of, uh, pattern. Do you think that the process um, for this game still allows your characters to feel somewhat fleshed out? Like, I know we said that in comparison to, a like, a more, I keep saying traditional because I don't really know what else to call it, like, a bigger game, um, that this doesn't feel like there's as much there. But do you think that it still allows for your character to feel like their own kind of individual person that you, you know, like, you have something you can sink your teeth into? I think specifically the... The fact that you have to pick a type, they have yeah. a, a distinct list of types that forces you into certain sections. Mm-hmm. I think the only person here that doesn't get that is the person who has to play the leader. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the leader is, like, you can have all sorts of different kinds of leader. You can have all sorts of different kinds of anything, but that's the least amount of, like, concrete, mm-hmm. your character is this thing. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't get, like, a description in right. there. The other ones are like, here, you're kind of like this, and this one's like, you're the leader. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that that combined with number three, picking your drawback, right. is basically your character right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else relates to your magical girl persona, um, except for number six, where you're just picking a name of your character. Mm-hmm. And that, that doesn't really tell you too much about who your person is as a, a mundane person. Uh, mm-hmm. But I yeah, I was gonna say I don't think that you really have like any idea at all who you are like as a non magical. Yeah, girl. The, on- the only the number three, only the drawback tells you anything about your character mm-hmm. when you're not a magical girl. Yeah, exactly. Well, even uh, even the type too, uh, except for the leader, because the genius is probably going to be good in school. Uh, right. The spiritual one's going to be the the person that's always at the temple, like you know, writing those prayer cards and putting them on trees or whatever they do. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so, so it tells you a bit about what you can work with, especially if you're familiar with those sorts of tropes. Yeah, that's true too. I think it probably is a little bit easier if you have more of a knowledge of the genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do we see as the flaws in this character creation process, uh, which is more of a lasers and feelings as a whole? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm mean, gonna have a controversial opinion here and say, for what it is, it's not really flawed. Uh, yeah. Like, 
if if you fix the problems with it, then you're you're breaking more things like what it's trying to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're making it more uh, Yeah, it does what it means to do very well. The question is, do you want that thing that it means yeah. to mm-hmm. do? Yeah, so... I always get frustrated on Twitter when I see people, like, tweet at designers or, like, designers will copy, like, screen cap, like, Reddit posts or something like that that are like, can I do this in this game? And I'm <laughs> always like, I want your game to be a different game. Does this game ever be a different game? And, <laughs> Have like, you tried being a different game? <laughs> right, people are like, oh, well, you could just do that with D&D. And it's like, yeah, but not everything is supposed to do that thing. No. Right. And so, like, have you tried? Can you your game be different game? No, it cannot. So can we translate so, Love and Justice to D&D rules right now? Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, if we could. Um, yeah, so I need a druid. I need I need to know how to. No. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you're right. For what it's meant to do, it does those things. You know, like, are, are there things that I don't necessarily love about it? Yes, because like I said, we don't get a big idea of, like, what your mundane persona is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I do wish that, like, the leader concept maybe was fleshed out a little bit more. But other than that, it yeah, it does what you need it to do to play the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it gives you plenty of direction under playing the game and running the game. Uh, to really kind of nudge yourself into exploring that character during play. So I, I think that uh, altogether it, it works really well. Uh, it's just it, you got to go in with the expectation that you're not going to get a fully developed character out of character creation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do we think the process, like going through the process of character creation, gives us pretty strong clues about what we're going to get when we play this game? I think so. Yeah, I think that like because the doc is is just for everybody to read. Yeah, like it's three pages. There's no reason not to read the whole thing, even if you're just a player. Um, you get an idea of what you're gonna do, uh, especially if you're coming to like Love and Justice. You probably want to play a magical girl game. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, I think it all it's it's all themes. It's all it is. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. Like, and it, these are the things you're gonna do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's uh, love and 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 justice, not lasers and feelings. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, I think that like going through, I haven't played the game. I've just done character creation now, but mm-hmm. going through, I feel like I have a strong idea of like what sort of nonsense we're going to be getting into mm-hmm. and like what is expected of me yeah. when I sit down to play this. And there's going to be a lot of serial references. Uh, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, so many serials. Like opening scene, Super you are at the local serial cafe. Oh, interesting. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, but they're trying to open a donut shop up across the street. Wow, no, no, thank you. Yeah, like <laughs> donut. The, 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 the main villain is cereal al- or breakfast alternatives. Oh my gosh! Like there's like no, the main villain is just oatmeal, you guys. No, oatmeal is technically a cereal, um, but I'm thinking like you know, like omelets and and like uh, pancakes most, and donuts. Let's be honest, most of our enemies are gonna be egg themed. Yeah. <laughs> The scrambler. The scrambler. <laughs> <laughs> so oh I mean, that's our next question. So. Yeah. So let's let's dive into uh, some fanfic for these for these characters. Uh, do you want me to just go ahead and roll these I these think questions? We can alternate. You roll. Yeah, that works. Amelia rolls and I roll, and we see what happens. Yeah, let's do that. So the girls go to. Okay, the girls go to number three, a new sweets shop. Ooh, Ooh. that's almost perfect. I knew it. <laughs> Trust them. Uh, the team's nemesis. Uh, Dark Heart Collective. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, you know. That's okay. a coffee shop. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, uh, real quick, this definitely makes a tie in to our leader with a dark past. Did you used to be a coffee themed here, uh, villain? Oh, no. Uh, probably. Uh, probably. This is very good because there's a local coffee company here called Colectivo. <laughs> so uh, they show up because they want to. You want to roll that one, Amelia? Yeah. Ooh. That one fell on the floor. Four. Destroy. Destroy. Ooh. The. Ooh, what are they destroying? Six. Future Utopian Kingdom. Oh, gosh. To, of Serial Landia. To power their super weapon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. This is Which well, is just an got... espresso machine. <laughs> 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 
They're trying to. They're just trying to destroy the future utopia to power this giant industrial <laughs> express <laughs> machine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. Totally. Oh my god. So we've got alternate breakfast themed uh, villains mm-hmm. uh, from the Dark Heart Collective, because of course they've got a dark heart because they're not eating cereals. Oh yeah. That's sure. how you fix dark hearts. Yep. They haven't had a balanced they breakfast. They haven't had a balanced breakfast with the cereal. It makes included. them so grumpy. We you know? will use our balanced breakfast blast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's how and we... It's definitely that, that trope of like, if we don't destroy them, we cleanse them, which just makes them want cereal. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, so, but it turns out because we have our balanced breakfast blast, we have all of the milk. And yeah. uh, maybe, that's what, maybe that's what their coffee needs to not cream. be so dark. That's true. <laughs> So we can come together with the understanding that milk is good for both cereal and coffee. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> the secret was milk all. Oh my God. <laughs> the, the true milk was in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> the true milk was the friends we made along the way. I don't think that's where milk comes from, you guys. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's a family <laughs> those, family friendly podcast. Those poor cows. Exposing uh, their secrets. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I really like the idea that that's that's what they need is to not be so dark. So they just really need milk in their coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> love that. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. I love yeah. this game so much. It's very it's, good. Um, not at all where I thought that would go. I don't know where I thought it would go, but breakfast cereal wasn't it? Nope. Um, uh, you're. But I did literally finish eating cereal right before I went to record. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. I had Fruit Loops. In case nice. you're wondering. Nice. Sponsor us, Kellogg's. Yep. You're welcome for this content, Senda. <laughs> right. We're sorry. Um, maybe. <laughs> Do we apologize on this show? Uh, usually. Profusely, I'm on this show. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that wraps everything up. Hopefully. Hopefully we don't make this any worse. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for joining us for our Love and Justice episode. Do you want to remind folks where they can find you? Uh, I'm just, I'm at Iolo on Twitter. Uh, that's, it's Iolo if you're anyone but me. Uh, <laughs> I don't pronounce things right, apparently, including my own Twitter handle. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe, I think, though, that that means everyone else is pronouncing it wrong. I, because... No, no, no. I meant, I, meant, I meant for it to be pronounced I- Iolo oh. and then spelled it wrong. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Because I always read it um, as electronic, you only live once. I know. I, okay, so I've had this name. Oh my god! I've had this name for so long, and then YOLO happened, and I just I hate the world. I hate it all. I hate youth culture. <laughs> Youths, get off my lawn Those and darn my youths. freaking username. Okay, real talk. I also hate YOLO. Like it is yeah. one of my pet peeves things of internet language speak and <laughs> ye. Sorry to those that love YOLO. Have- no uh, strong opinions yep. on the concept okay <laughs> not sorry to y'all yep um <laughs> the, so. and also you should listen to the playtest podcast uh depending on when this comes out you may hear some familiar voices <laughs> it definitely will soon uh this, this <laughs> yes. comes out august 5th august 5th so yeah the the, the i think the first episode uh of y'all's arc on uh playtest is going up the same day Ooh, so. Ooh awesome so Ryan and I'll be on uh, playtest. Yeah, yep. That that was a lot well, of fun recording. Some familiar voices. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You have to listen to find well, out. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you again, and thank you to everyone for listening. And please join us next week when we break with format and discuss an entirely different game. Dun dun dun. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. 
Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Arms of the Tide. Arms of the Tide is an actual play about fighting for what's right in an original magic technological world on the brink of catastrophe using the Mutants in the Night system. Join Quinn, Joe, Chanel, and John, and revel in the laughs and gasp at the drama while the only things standing against the apocalypse are a robot with a fondness for stray cats, a wolf made of living plants with a bad case of depression, and a private eye who's so done with all of this. Yay! Again. Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah, it's going. Uh, Ooh. I don't know how far off that is, though. How many seconds oh, you got right yeah. now? I'm at ooh, ooh, eight. Okay, so you're about eight, eight seconds behind. Uh, That's fine. That's fine, as long as we know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, boop, boop. Okay. Everything's good. We're good. We're golden. Good. This is why the clapping method sometimes works around. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I did not account for the lag on the recording to actually recording. Uh, thing from the click to recording click to record the like <laughs> delay time yeah yeah my, my program it, it 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 just started hitching when i hit record uh like a few months ago and oh. i i didn't always do it so it's not just the program hmm. i have no idea w- why <laughs> maybe you got uh too much uh bits in your hard drive too many bits. Too many bits. Mm. Just yeah, that it up happens, in there. To, <laughs> happens to me all the time. You got to sweep yeah. out those bits every now and then, and then then your hard drive's better. <laughs> happens to the best of us. <laughs> you got to sweep out those bits. Yep. It's true. Yeah. That's what they call I've it. heard that. That's, yep. I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, God, I hope they don't. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Who's the professional IT? <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Which is worrisome. <laughs> um, Chris, I really like that you clarified that you are the guest here. Me. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Yeah. Guest. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Even though when we actually did it, I, I put like, cri- like, <laughs> I was like, Chris. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's so warm in here right now. A, you're well, in a you sauna. You are recording in a literal <laughs> sauna, Ryan. No, but it's not normally this warm. Like my yes, glasses. It was my, when we first started doing it. You were like, "Oh, it's like ninety something degrees in here." Well, that's because my my computer was in here as well. That wasn't helping. But this time, that account for all ninety eight degrees. No, this time, I don't know why my glasses are fogging up and I'm just like overheating or something. Maybe it's you all the chai a southern, I just had. A southern bell. Just, yeah. I <laughs> no, yeah. Like, this is great audio. Oh my god, you should see my waveforms. They're horrible. Okay, I'll stop doing it. Are we ready? Any questions before we begin? Uh, I, I'm, I'm good. Ryan, any questions before we begin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all right. Oh my gosh, I had a dream last night. Sidebar. I had a dream last night that I had like some kind of like D&D something on my phone. And like... 
some person was like, oh, my God, you need Jesus. Like, this is not a thing that's ever happened to me. Nobody's ever, like, you know. But, like, I had a dream about it last night that I was, like, at some hotel checking in. And the guy that owned it was, like, super conservative. And he was like, I'm going to let you stay in my hotel, but I want you to know that I'm watching you. Like, it was very weird. Anyway, that's illegal. I very, I very rarely me. remember my dreams. But, like, <laughs> anyway, I just remembered that. Okay. Oh, only for this conversation. Oh no, we lost Amelia. Oh, dang. I we said she... we said Kawhi and she failed. <laughs> <laughs> no, why? Uh oh. Okay. 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 This is what this is fine. Okay? Um so her laptop has this fun little feature where if you bump it Ron, it just goes off. It turns off. Awesome. Uh <laughs> which is great in the middle of a recording. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I think she was probably reaching for something and Maybe bumped that cord. Cool beans. Uh huh. Uh, well, it's a good thing you have a backup, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> but the last time I tried using the backup, the timings were off on it. Yeah. Like the local recordings were fine, but then the backups were like compressed too much. Uh huh. And so, like after a while, like it started getting sooner and sooner when the waveforms were coming. Uh huh. It, it, it was it like. If it because we've only been recording for what 20 30 minutes, something like that. She's Hello. back, maybe. Okay, no, there my computer are. did the thing where it decided to like pretend that it's not plugged in and charging and then just turned off, oh, even fun. though it still says it's plugged in. And I didn't touch anything, I need a new computer so bad. Okay, so hey, uh, um, there might be a couple like a minute there missing from my recording. Audacity okay. is still going, but but just, it's like know. something weird. Uh, can we do a three, two, one clap for you? Sure. Uh, okay, so I won't clap because I can see my waveforms doing this, but uh, feel free. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, clappy. Okay. Okay, cool. Sync those recordings. Okay, cool. Where were we? All right, I gotta sneeze one second. <laughs> <laughs> funny to see it in silence i know <laughs> <laughs> it looks painful <laughs> everybody just chug chug their drinks real quick <laughs> i know but none of us muted it so oh there we sounds. go well because if i hit my mute button it makes a weird click sound which i know it does it's really like <laughs> annoying to edit out to chunk yeah i don't want to destroy my audacity with a like full-on sneeze Oh, do you yell sneeze? Are you one of those monsters? It's horrible. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, my ex husband used to do it, and it like I'm I'm also easily startled. I tell people I'm like a small forest critter. Like Me I too. can't. I will scream <laughs> if I get startled. Mm -hmm. Um, and he does the he does the yell sneeze thing too. So like he would yell sneeze, and then I would scream. Yeah, I don't it's terrifying. don't it's yell thing. sneeze. It was it's more of like a, a really loud explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, I can't wait for the outtakes for the series. But um, when I'm around people or uh, inside anywhere that has people in it, I will usually internalize the sneeze yeah. as much as I can. So it's more of a... Yeah, that's what I do every time. I feel like if my sneezes sound like I'm about to die. If I have the <laughs> opportunity to let out the sneeze fully, I get those germs out as fast as possible. <laughs> See, I do like the tiny little, like, <laughs> yeah. I have, like, one of those cute sneezes. You got those, like, hypersonic uh, sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not a sneeze theme group, though. So. <laughs> oh, no, should I think be viruses? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just okay, turn, turn the cereals. tables. Breakfast cereals, that's better. Also on my screen, Amelia has frozen. She has also frozen again. Why? Oh, no. Why? There she is. Nope. Oh. And Amelia's back. I am. Uh, I was, like, I don't, uh, it, it's, it's a, there's a, so I, let's start that again without me, uh, porky picking. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop my recording. Yeah, me too. Stop. Stop.